My name's Dan Hewitt. Really excited to be here today for this historic launch. And Dan, we are so excited to have you here with us. My name is Jesse Anderson, and I'm a lead manufacturing engineer here at SpaceX. We are so honored to be NASA's partner in returning humans to space from the shores of Kennedy Space Center. Ten years ago, we sent the Dragon that's displayed right behind us on its first orbital demonstration flight. And I speak for all of us at SpaceX when I say we could not be more excited to finally be sending humans to the International Space Station. It's a great day. Today's mission is known as Demonstration Mission 2 or Demo 2. It's going to be the first time a commercially built spacecraft will launch people to the space station. Demo 2 is an end-to-end -end flight test from launch all the way to docking and ending with splashdown. And it's the final test for NASA to certify SpaceX for regular crew flights to the space station. Right now, SpaceX and NASA have teams working together around the country. On the SpaceX side, team at the Cape are performing final launch day checkouts and they're just going to make sure Dragon is healthy and good to go. Marie, this is amazing. We're in the suit-up room. I mean, I remember this back in 2009 when I was sitting in Lazy Boys from back in the Apollo era, but they have these really cool new suits and new seats that they're, they're working in here. So Yeah, it's so amazing to see this first live look in the room. There's astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley sitting in those seats, um, being helped by the suit technicians. Uh, this room was first used for the first Apollo mission, Apollo 7. Um, that they suited up in there in 1968. And there they are uh, giving a thumbs up. That looks like Doug giving a thumbs up there. Of course, um, Bob was mission specialist on STS-123 um, and STS-130. Bob's a native of St. Anne, Missouri, so I'm sure folks in his hometown are watching. Lots of hometown pride going on right now. And same for Doug. Um, he was born in Endicott, New York, which happens to be my hometown too. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> but he considers Apple Lake in his hometown, so I know folks are watching there. And Doug was the pilot on STS-127, STS-135, which was the final shuttle flight. Um, so it's so cool to see them in there, uh, Lauren and Leland. Last time this room was used for this purpose that you see here was STS-135 in 2011, and Doug Hurley was one of the astronauts in there doing that. So this is really amazing to see. That's really cool to see there, and, and we can't hear what they're saying, but uh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in there right now. Lauren, I wonder what Elon is saying. Oh, just probably telling them how, how honored he is to, to be able to give them a ride today. And I know the NASA administrator, he talked about this yesterday. I mean, he's met with the crew uh, before today even and said, you know, I've told Bob and Doug, it's not too late to call this off <laughs> if you have any second thoughts. And of course, they, they had none. Um, they're super pumped about this, ready to go. And right now, it's just, you know, we just need the weather to cooperate. But most importantly, right in front of them, we have this set of three displays. And these are the touchscreen displays that give them access to Dragon. This is their window into their spacecraft. They're able to see all of the different systems. They're able to take control of Dragon. They're able to see where they are over the Earth or in relation to the space station. They're able to see even when thrusters are firing. Or, and if you keep your eye on this little dot, you've been hearing some background noise. We actually have recorded noises of those thrusters that they're able to hear and see in real time while they're training. There's also some hard-coded buttons for some of the more important things, like the pyrotechnics if they need to cut the main parachute after they land in the water, and of course the launch escape system. So they spent a lot of time in here just getting familiar with Dragon's control systems, but you need a bigger picture. You need to put it all together. And to do that, we can come over here where you just want something a little more higher fidelity, where you have everything from the seats, the displays, the cargo, all of it, just to really make sure you're training so by the time you get up to space, it feels like you've almost been there before. And that's where we're gonna find Jesse. Oh, hey there. I was just training for my next mission to space, but since you're here, let me show you around. This is our flight simulator, which is basically a one-to-one -one replica of a Crew Dragon vehicle as far as the functionality and the interior. So the astronauts can get suited up, they can practice entering and exiting the vehicle, they can climb into their seats and actually get strapped in. These seats recline back so that they can access these display panels which are actually functional. And then they can practice flying the vehicle, manually docking with the space station, they can open and close the hatch, and basically by the time they, they get to a day like today, they felt like they've already done the mission a hundred times before. Well, I'm gonna get back to training, so let's get back to launch. 
Oh, here they come. Oh, here they are. Here they come, NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley. They've each made this journey twice before for the space shuttle missions, but they've never done this in a SpaceX spacesuit. They've never done this together, and they've never done this on their way to head to a commercially built rocket and spacecraft to head to space. Remember when I was looking for that Astro van and I see these white Teslas with meatballs and worms on them. It's just a, a new era in space travel. Oh yeah, they're riding in Tesla Model Xs. They have been equipped with cooling units, so once they sit inside, that umbilical that I was referring to earlier uh, will connect to the spacesuit to provide cooling while they're inside of the vehicle. And you can see them talking and waving with their families now. Wow. We just saw them do a virtual <laughs> hug uh, with their sons. Here's Megan and Karen and their sons, yeah. They're the dads. <laughs> the dads, yeah. It's so awesome. Wow, so they're climbing through those DeLorean doors of the Model X. It, this is totally from the future. It's Are they stock? Are they stock Teslas? <laughs> <laughs> and then you see in the front seat there, that's our flight surgeon. Uh, he's climbing in, and the suit technicians, um, there's one Chris Trigg right there, number 12. He is buckling in. Uh, they, they're both, the two suit techs are buckling in, Bob and Doug, and they're connecting that umbilical. And Lauren, I know you mentioned this earlier, but for folks that maybe weren't watching then or, or can't remember, I mean, it's it's we're in Florida. It's super hot, super muggy. So how are they staying cool? There are these portable cooling units. We had one at the ONC building, or sorry, two at the ONC building. There are two in the Teslas. There will be two in the elevators and then two in the white room when they arrive on the crew arm. So we're just keeping the cool air flowing through the suits. There's actually ducting integrated into the suits to keep them cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> These are precious moments. This is where, this is what, this is what it's all about, as I mentioned before. It's about the people. It's about the families and working together as one community to get Doug and Bob launching off to the cosmos, to the space station. Yeah, it's, it's emotional. <laughs> it's emotional watching that. It really is. There they go. Now, as we see the convoy, convoy begin the journey to the pad, 39A, we are thinking about each and every one of you, our colleagues and friends at SpaceX and NASA, who have had a, san a hand in seeing the Crew Dragon commercial crew program come to life. There we go, crew arriving at the pad. As you can imagine, flying humans requires keeping a habitable environment inside Dragon throughout the entire flight. And so that's everything like providing breathing air, keeping the capsule at a safe pressure, keeping it free of contaminants, removing carbon dioxide, regulating temperature and humidity, and implementing a waste collection system, AKA the toilet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, the form and the function, I mean, this black pad with the white ticking and, you know, it's, it's a, really beautiful. You think about STEM education, but this is totally STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And I think, you know, SpaceX has done an incredible job of making things look really beautiful and functional and, and you know, everything just fits perfectly. And I, and I think, you know, when we were having our, our launch pad, there were poses and things hanging off, but this is a very sleek and elegant and kind of futuristic look at the next era of space travel. And, um, you know, I, I, I just love seeing these Teslas versus the Astro van. Are they doing selfies? <laughs> it's like they're trying, to, they're trying to strain to see the top of the Crew Dragon just taking in the sight. It's pretty high. <laughs> and I don't know if you, if you caught this one. We, we, we could see it briefly on the shot, but the, uh, they, the license plate says ISS, VND, ISS bound. Oh, you nice. You follow? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully they will be today. We just need the weather to... Say, I mean, it looks pretty nice right now, right? But I mean, obviously it's not just what the weather conditions are here. They've got to think about downrange in case of an abort, mm -hmm. uh, make sure it's okay for recovery if we get into a situation like that, which is unlikely. So this elevator is going to take them up to level 255. It's not 255 floors, but that's 255 feet. And from there they'll take, once they get up there and this elevator is pretty zippy, so they'll get up there pretty quickly, um, they'll get out and they'll walk up another flight of stairs to level 265, and that's where they will greet the crew arm. And here they come. It's a beautiful view up there too of the, you know, all of the surroundings in Florida and this national wildlife uh, retreat that we have here. But 
getting ready for the business at hand of getting in the rocket and uh, heading to the cosmos. And those are the stairs uh, Lauren mentioned. They're at the two, it's the 255 foot level right now. Yes. I think I said that right. And now they're headed up the stairs to the 265 foot level. That's the level that will take them to where the, the crew access arm is in the white room. Uh, we see them signing. Looks like they're signing something in there right now. Yeah, we give them a black Sharpie to sign the white room. It's starting a new tradition. Hmm. Yeah, we didn't do that. That's nice. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good tradition. Yeah. yeah, that was really important to us. Dragon, we see it as a 21st century spaceship. It needs to look like a 21st century spaceship. It flies like a 21st century spaceship. So, of course, of course, the ground support equipment should look like it's from the same era. The suits do. Mm -hmm. um, all of that sort of future-facing technology and aesthetic is super important to us. Uh, actually, right now, you can see that duct in uh, the, the hands of member number five there. Um, that is an ECS duct, or environmental control system duct. Um, once this original... Oh, did one just, who just went in? Was that Doug or Bob? I think that was Doug. Okay. Doug that was Doug, yeah. yeah. That is awesome. CDR, loud and clear. PLT, loud and clear. Core, loud and clear. Unbuilable. Com check complete. Stand by for ground station com check. Dragon, launch director on countdown one. Com check. Mike, we've got you loud and clear. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Let me try on uh, Dragon to ground one. Dragon, SpaceX Watch Director, uh, Dragon to Ground One, comp check. Not and clear. Have you the same? Dragon, SpaceX, launch configuration comp checks are complete. Report when ready for seat rotation for Section 2 of 4.100. So they perform a leak check. There is a mechanism there called a side hatch mechanism. That is what actually closes the hatch and seals it. And what we'll do is perform a leak check on that for a few minutes to make sure that that's nice and tight, that those O-rings are sealed really, really well. And uh, after that, we will install the, uh, yeah, you can see the leak check uh, ground support equipment there in the technician's hands there. And we see we see them using the touch screens now. Leland, what's your take on this? Because this has got to look totally different from what you were looking at during shuttle. Touch screens. <laughs> we had these <laughs> these displays and these buttons and you know, we, we it was it was one of those moments when I'm looking at this now when I had knee boards that had procedures and things on there and the procedures are now all run in that middle screen and the malfunctions and the things that you do to mitigate problems with the uh, with the vehicle if something happens it's all controlled right there with the two of them and so it's a it's a radical departure from what we did with the shuttle but it's again ushering in this new era of space travel for post ingress brief and a check on how that suit air feels about now and we're going to listen now for an announcement right, we're ready about hatch closer Copy. Well, today we are not tracking any issues on Dragon and F9 currently. Um, for a weather update, the weather line that is overhead, which is what you saw when you were ingressing, is now moving offshore. The next radar return is a cell over Orlando, which is expected to be our decision gate for today, and that is currently eroding. That's uh, good news. Thank you. That is liquid oxygen you see venting off the rocket. That's completely normal and expected. We're standing by for a weather update. Um, unless you can give us another uh, 10 minutes, I don't think we're gonna get there uh, with any of the rules today. I'm gonna give you 10 minutes. I mean, <laughs> another 10 minutes past T0. Oh, 1640, 1645 local, I think we'll probably be clear on all the rules, but uh, uh, not, quite, not quite gonna make it for this. Okay, we're going to check back in with you in about two minutes, and then I'll call it up at about uh, 17 minutes. 
Okay. Yeah, we got. We, there's some of them are starting to count down, but we still have one above 2,000. So if that gets below. Dragon SpaceX, we are initiating seat rotation. Dragon copies, we're ready. That call out from the Dragon Corps up to the crew, letting them know that we are sending the commands from the ground to rotate the seats. And you can see astronauts Doug Hurley, Bob Benkin rotating in their seat back to a more comfortable position to get in and out of the capsule. With them getting out of the capsule though, that's gonna do it for us here at Hawthorne. We're gonna send you back down to Florida for one last check-in with our teams there. So over to you, Marie, Lauren, Leland, if you're still sticking around, and we're gonna be looking forward to Saturday. There we see Bob uh, in the foreground and Doug climbing out of Crew Dragon in the background. Um, doing that flight uh, leak check, I mean, all of this is a ton of learning that, that came out of here, even if we didn't ultimately go to space today. Absolutely. So we're getting a cool view that we wouldn't have seen if they'd launched. They're making their way back down the crew access arm, um, and they are going to be turning the corner there, heading to the stairs that are going to take them down to the elevator. Passing the worm. Passing, Passing the, the worm. The worm. <laughs> So, yep, they're heading down the stairs now. It's going to take them down to the 255-foot level, and then uh, they're going to be getting in the elevator, take them down to the ground level. And we'll do it again on Saturday. <laughs>